Alrighty. Howdy neighbors and welcome back to Scarlet Hollow. Last time we could not find Stella, but we did find cryptic messages. Take it with Kanika since she currently has a cold. Not going anywhere before checking in on Kanika. You make your way upstairs. Knock on Kanika's door. Mom, I really don't need any more tea. I think it's gonna lie down for a while. I'm going to the clinic. I was hoping you would join me. Oh, hey. Hi, Iris. My arm was right. I'm exhausted. I probably shouldn't push it or I'll wind up worse off tomorrow. Looks like you're on your own. <clears throat> you make your way out of the general store and down the road to the clinic. Make your way up the familiar hill and then I missed that. So that's a whoops. Hello? Who is this little man? And who is this guy? This is a ditch leg. This is not who we want to see. Instead, we want to hang out with this guy. Oh, there's another ditch leg over here. Is there any more? Hold on. Oh, there he is. Hi. <gasps> no, it's Wayne! <laughs> I just realized that. Um, I don't know if these are ditch slings or not, so I'm not going to count them. There's one over here. I think that's all I can see right now. So, th four ditchlings, for sure. A raccoon, and a Wayne. God, I hate that he's here. Not long before we find stuff outside of Dr. Kelly's clinic. It's secrets and enticing you to find a way in. We're right at the bottom of the hill. You can already feel the presence. <clears throat> like a magnet has been fixed to your ribcage, gently tugging you forward, guiding you toward whatever emanates this compuls compulsive frequency. glance around, eyes train on the underbrush. A flash of a striped tail grabs your eye immediately. Can I help you, Buster? Hey, if you're trying to break into the house at the top of the hill, how would you do it? What? So you guys got little hands and go through people's trash and supposed to know how to break into places? There's a hill that'll take you right up to the big flat roof thing. Sometimes the human leaves the windows open up there and I can go aside. Don't tell them, okay? I like to sleep with their big piles of clothes. It's one of my few joys in life. Bye. He leaves as you turn around to look at the clinic. You have your way in. <clears throat> God, I could just do that. I need Wayne to stop looking at me. <laughs> Found at times that if you hadn't wished to be seen, there's nothing stopping you from remaining hidden. Graveyards, random buildings, old tunnels. It's just been all sorts of strange and unusual places without incident. And for some reason, tonight Dr. Kelly's clinic feels no different. You obviously make your way to the old wooden series of clinics, wrap around porch, taking steps to strange patterns. To an outside observer, you might appear to be drunk, but there's an unconscious, unconscious method to your. Conscious madness. Though even you would be hard pressed to describe it. But there is no creak or moan of ancient wood as you make your way to the door. Silence. Press the door open slowly and slip in. <gasps> you see the dock at a desk in some room down the hall. I not notice you yet. You shut the door silently, watching her closely. You're in the clinic, free to explore as you please. Rather, you're free, quote unquote, to explore as you please. Well, I'll ask the station again. Nagging, the nagging pull of whatever it was that wanted you to find it. You're here now, and it knows you're here. You know exactly where it is. Another stone carving, eager to show you its secrets. You've been caught by its gravity. 
an overwhelming curiosity guiding you around a corner and toward the dark doorway under the stairs. It's been left ajar as if inviting you to enter. Do not turn on the lights, you dumb fuck. You bring a flashlight. Turn on the lights. Lights look on. You're in a morgue. Iris, what are you doing in the morgue? Hi. <clears throat> this is not where, what I thought this was going to be. You haven't seen Stella around, have you? She's been missing since last night. I haven't. Do you think you find her in the morgue? It's always so distant. You're talking is strong down here. You feel yourself slipping into a trance, and your eyes wander to the back wall of the morgue. You need to see what's back there. Follow the pole. Touch the wall. It feels disappointingly solid under your palms. Hey, you okay? Reese's his hand gently, shake your shoulder, and for a moment, the thing on the other side of the big white wall loosens a pull on you. Possessed for a second there. You good. Make him understand. Use your words. Let this forever consume you. Be present in the moment. You inhale deeply and take in your surroundings. <clears throat> Can't help but notice that one of the body storage drawers labeled Paraline Scarlet. Examine your aunt's body. You step forward and pull out the drawer. Cute! This is your aunt Paraline. Cole Baron uh, Cole Baroness of the Scarlet Mines. And so and local she devil. That it seemed no one, not even her own daughter, was able to mourn. It's not the first corpse you've seen. But it feels like the same as any other. She's an empty body now. The warmth and energy of her life now dissipated. The same as your mother was, and the same as you'll be one day. Cold air rises from her bluer skin, her vacant, flimsy eyes starting, staring up at nothing. I couldn't imagine what she looked like alive and breathing, slinging subtle insults to the townsfolk. But it's hard to picture any expression in the face so stiff and cold with death, making sure she didn't walk off. No need to make any comment here. Having seen all there was to see, you set the door back in and closed it. The mines had a stone carving the other night, as did Oscar's house yesterday. They've both been giving me visions, and I can sense one on the other side of the wall. I need to see it. This glances back at the wall. You're really serious, aren't you? It's probably a bad idea, but... We need to get in there. I'm pretty sure there's an emergency axe somewhere upstairs. I just need to get the dog out of our hair. Should take two seconds. <clears throat> I like the sweater he's got. Get the dog out of our hair. Yeah, if I say I'm sick and need something, she'll drop whatever she's doing and do it for me. Should fire a way to get her out of the house. The most and most of the time it's true, anyway. I had to learn that little trick. When you're a teenager whose doctor mom won't leave you alone for two seconds, you learn how to make it happen. Thank you for understanding. Don't mention it. If there's anything I can do to actually be useful, I could help. Be right back. Strides past you, his long legs moving swiftly. He seems excited. His usual dour demeanor, replaced by an uncharacteristically pep and characteristic pep, when faced with the prospect of sneaking around and tearing down walls. Your soft voice filtering through the open doorway at the top of the stairs. A hoarse and sickly edge added for effect as he speaks to his mother. Hey mom. He coughs gently. Reese. 
I didn't know you were awake. I still feel like shit. But I think I can finally try to get some juice down. It looks like we're all out though. Really, I thought I'd just fix them up. I've got an error to run on Main Street anyway. Pick up some orange juice. Some ginger ale too. That'd be awesome. Sorry to ask, I know you're busy. It's no problem, it doesn't take long. I'll do anything too strenuous while I'm gone. Just lie in bed until I get back. Thanks, Mom. I'll take it easy. <coughs> Fuck. You hear her footsteps move down the hall, and then the front door opening and closing. It worked. The theatric rasp of the lift his voice. Excitement rising in his place. Come on up. We don't have long until she's back. You step out of the morgue, you relax. The extra space between you and the carving has weakened its hold on you, and with it, your desperation to claw your way through the wall and unveil it. It's one of those emergency fire axes. It should be pretty obvious wherever it is, though I'm not sure where she's been keeping it. I'll show you around. Let's try the doc's office first. You make your way to the doorway of her now vacant office. I'll see an axe in here. He is right. A cursory glance reveals nothing but stacks of paper and cabinets and medical supplies. Something on the desk catches your eye. Sort of records. With your family name on them. He stops in the doorway, turning to watch you leaf through the documents. Find something interesting. Your family death certificates. You quickly flip through a few of the other Scarlets whose names aren't quite familiar. Theodore Scarlet, born May 24th, 1890. Died 1918, age 28. Cause of death, crushed in mind collapse, body not recovered. Sent by his brother, Enroch Scarlet. Mrs. Scarlet, born April 1914, died June 7th, 1944. Lewis Scarlet, born August 1920, died June 6th, 1944. Both killed at Normandy in the line of duty. They must have been Edward Eaton's brothers. <coughs> Certificate of Fetal Death, Infant Boy. Andrew Charles Scarlet, delivered April 3rd, 1945, stillbirth. Mother, Edward Eaton Scarlet. Cause of death, complications during birth. No doctor present. Home burial. Alexandria Scarlet. Born December 12th, 1947. Died August 2nd, 1957. Age 9. Missing, presumed dead. Signed by Mother Edwardian Scarlet. Mary Bell Scarlet. Born September 3rd, 1946. Died October 30th, 1963. Age 17. Cause of death, complications during childbirth. Signed by her mother, Edwardian Scarlet. Wow, that's a lot of kids to outlive. <coughs> Edwardine's Edwardine Scarlet. Born April 9th, 1913. Died February 12th, 2003. Age 89. Cause of death, heart failure. Signed by her granddaughter, Paraline Scarlet. Pretty normal. Almost made it to 90. Died of normal old people illness. Oh, Scarlet. Born September 9th. 1887, died August 20th, 1957, age 69. Cause of death, fall from cliff. <laughs> Jesus. This one is the corridor's report attached. Organs sustained impact injuries. Lacerations on the neck and body consistent with the fall from great height. Oh, an actual autopsy report. It's ancient. Cause of death, sleep apnea. Discovered by your daughter, Tabitha Chrysanthemum Scarlet. No autopsy performed. Remember that his middle name is Chrysanthemum? I wonder who cursed her with that mouthful. I feel like this is forbidden knowledge. <coughs> Mrs. Lives look up to the doorway, and a second later you hear the sound of the front door handle being turned! Sand is on your shoulder, before you can even register what's happening. We push back and out of view of the front door. Shit. Not supposed to be here. We gotta hide. He hurries to the closet, motioning for you inside. He slips inside and squelches yourself into the little spaces available in the nearly full closet. Reese is close on your heels. <coughs> you let him in. Heather, you listen as the doctor makes your way to some room deeper in the clinic. In the sense of the tiny closet, every breath seems too loud. As if you could expect the Dr. Kelly to hear you 
Oh, to hear it come from wherever she crosses the house. Better wait a second, just in case. God, I want to. I won't, but I want to. The two of you stand in tense silence, both crammed into a suffocating closet, taking shallow breaths as if she could hear your breathing on the other side of the building. This stuff soon returned. Dr. Kelly makes her way back toward your hiding place. Picking floorboards, broadcasting her location all the way to the hallway just outside your hiding spot. The footsteps return. They get louder, approaching the open office door, and then they stop. With your relief, she opens another door, leaving the main clinic. We're in the clear. <coughs> probably only about a minute or two before she comes back, so let's make a count. The medical supply room is probably our best bet. If any other room in the clinic is likely to have a fire axe, it's probably a room full of chemicals. This way. <coughs> He motions you down the hall, slipping through a slightly ajar door of what you assume to be a supply room. Yes, there it is. Keys, keys. There we go. Press over to the cabinet that contains a bright red axe, pulling the glass door closed. Your axe. Now we can. Please pauses, turning to listen intently. And that was the door from the house. Come on, if we hurry, we can get back downstairs. I want interference. Go downstairs, quick. You can hear her approaching now. Floorboards creaking in the hallway on the other side of the office. Follow recent instruction. Once again, starting down the basement stairs. Letting the polar stone carving guide you back to the morgue. Dr. Kelly's voice filters down from above. I was right. We already have juice. It's in the back of the fridge. But there's no harm in having extra. What are you doing in the clinic? I thought I told you to go rest. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, I was getting chilled in the morgue. Where are my speakers? So if you hear some weird sounds, just my music. I'll be sure to put in earplugs to drown out all that industrial clanging you listen to. You know I'm not the biggest fan of you spending time down there. It can't be good for your mental health to hang out in the refrigerator of for corpses. Do you at least have a blanket this time? Yeah, I'll be fine. It's just a change of scenery. My room feels too claustrophobic right now. Okay. Let me know when it's time for dinner. You hear the door at the top of the stairs close, and the sound of Reese descending the stairs to join you in the fluorescent lit room below. Hey. I should warn you, something spooky might happen if we break down the wall. He smiles. Good. I feel like I've been missing out lately. Stop asking questions. It's time to see what's on the other side of the wall. May I make the first blow? Go for it. It drops the far end of the morgue. Axe practically swinging through the air as you strike the wall. This cut offers a surprising amount of resistance. Some structure behind it. Some wood frame holding it in place. Trying to stand between you and what waits for you on the other side. You stagger back as the massive hole in the wall admire your effort. Holy shit. <coughs> Flittering edges frames a dark passage seemingly cut deep to the side of the cliff. Coal seeping from the forgotten place of into an already frigid morgue. Reese coughs as he takes a better look at what lies beyond the wound of the wall. There's a whole hallway back here. Thick, stale air leaks from the hole, filling the moray with an earthly mildew smell. The room is slowly filling with dirt. With the sink of a grave-like room, beyond comes an even stronger compulsion. You step forward. You climb into the hole. <clears throat> this is wild! I had no idea any of this was here. Entire hospital wing, rotting away for decades behind some flimsy drywall. Hell yeah, dude. Yo, this is so sick. Someone doesn't. I didn't want us to find these carvings. I wonder if it's whoever put them here. If it's someone else. Whatever the reason, they put in a lot of effort to hide this one. 
I wonder if the doc even knows about this wing. Step forward into the unknown. Doesn't you don't bother to retrieve the axe. Final wall concealing the carving is rotten. Water damage having eaten away at the wood over the course of an unknowable years. The flames nearly reduced the sawdust. Keep your tear into it. There it is. <coughs> so sorry. I know. I thought you weren't going to come. I was worried you'd leave me here forever. They say there's nothing they can do. I'll, I'll never use my legs again. You know, what am I going to do? Calm down, Teddy. These doctors don't know what they're talking about. I'm doing my own research, and I found... Oh, and I found us an alternative. We don't have to worry about anything from here on out, I promise. I went to talk to the witch. A witch? But that's nonsense. It's alright, it's all sorted. We're taking you home today, and everything will be resolved by this time next week. That's right, Doctor. At this point, I think it's safe to say his body has never recovered. Whatever it was who claimed to be Theodore, it wasn't him. He didn't even paralyzed, as it turns out. It's uh, just some grifter trying to get attention from the tragedy. Everything goes black. Your vision swims into focus and takes you a solid second or two to reorient yourself. It's Reese! <clears throat> Hi, Reese. You're in an unfamiliar bed. Reese leans against the far wall, eyeing you with concern and curiosity. Hey, I was worried you slipped into a coma or something. You were on the wall like a wild animal. That's a weird carving that collapsed. I think you might have had some kind of seizure. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, nothing spooky happened. Ground didn't collapse on us? No ghosts? Nope, nothing. You just fell down, twitching a little. And when you seemed stable, I carried you back here. That was a few hours ago. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Just figured you'd rather wake up in a bed than rusty hallway. In the morgue. Does Dr. Kelly know I'm here? No. I stuck you back to the house while she was busy with the medical storage room. Maybe you wouldn't want to come to a new morgue. I had a vision. Like a hallucination. I have those sometimes, too. I see them a lot as a teen. Always... Just weird little things, like my hands would look weird and my neck would seem too long, or the room would feel smaller. Cards are clearly drilled into some gas pipe. Which is are they making me very suspicious of my family? Trying to warn us about something. <clears throat> yeah, at least one of the death records is murky. I don't think Teddy died of the mind collapse. My family has secrets. We thing to cover up, but it's not too surprising. An old family like that usually has at least a few secrets. But hopefully it's all ancient history. I like it's easy to cover up death these days, right? What now? I might be stuck down here for a while. The doc is on a warpath up there. I refuse to take my medicine, and she's not happy about it. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! 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 There's no way I'm going to take everything she gave me. She's been poisoning me for years. I'm thinking about what you said at dinner last night, and I don't see any other possibility. That's only—it's only been a day since I stopped taking my pills, and I feel great. I went ahead and blocked my door, so she can't get down here. Now we just have to wait for her out. Wait her out. No, 
I hope this is his art. I really hope this is his art. <laughs> what the door? Of course I did. Get you in front of it. Never really failed me before. I don't need her coming down here to finish me off, or whatever it is she might do now that I know that her treatment plan has been all these years. Good. Give us time to figure out a game plan. Exactly. I think we should treat her like a leg legitimate threat. <coughs> these weird memories. I always assumed they were dreams and hallucinations. Because they fit the way I thought of her, but I think she used tranquilizers on me. Other times I've gotten too unruly for her. I don't know how much of these memories I can trust, but I'm starting to think I should believe my instincts when it comes to the length she's willing to go to keep me under control. We'll wait until she's asleep. Then we can at least get out of the basement and we can figure out what to do from there. I don't get why your mom would poison you, though. I don't know. The thing I can't figure out is whether she's trying to kill me slowly. She just likes keeping me sick enough to be dependent on her. Either way, I don't think I ever had an illness. I think this illness was me growing up and becoming less easy to control. She should find a cure for that. <clears throat> get you out of here. Who knows what she'll do if she finds out what you know. Where we go? The only person I know who has a car is Kanika. She's not answering her phone. I don't know anyone else. I don't have any other family to go on. I never even finished high school. I get out of the house. I don't know if, how I can make sure I don't wind up right back here. at a time. Let's just start with waiting out your mom and getting out of here. You shouldn't call her my mom. As far as I'm concerned, she forfeited that title. I don't think I should... I don't think... I don't even think I should call her doctor. She's just a woman now. Can't wait for her to be in the rearview mirror for the rest of my life. Let's we'll see if we can wait her out. She doesn't fall asleep by 10. We can figure something else out. These windows are supposedly shatterproof. Which she always said was for burglars. And I assume it's yet another way to keep me boxed in. But we tried to break him anyway. This action seems like a good idea. As you can probably tell, I'm getting a little jittery. Maybe it's the lack of poison in my system for the first time in years. The fact that my whole perception of reality is turned on its head. That'll be a combo. It doesn't feel awful, to be honest. Now is the time we can flirt. Flirt. You can always show me. Sure you're okay with sitting for a portrait? I'd love to draw you. There's a quality to drawing that's almost like capturing memories. So snappy that it probably- oh, so as snappy as it probably sounds. But this can be a sort of snapshot for the night my life turned around. It's definitely a memory worth holding on to. I get you a chair. Exactly, he hurries across the room, pulling up a couple of chairs. You can see the difference in his energy. Energy now that he hasn't had his daily dose of poison. It's more talkative, less slouched. His long limbs no longer virtually tucked in at his sides. Kind of your face. I have concerns. Sure, you blush. He places a gentle hand on your jaw, moving your head slightly to the side. His fingertips are warm on your cheek, a sensation of their touch lingering on your skin as he pulls away. Perfect. Just for a moment, his eyes lock on yours, palpable tension filling the room. Oh, I'm so drawing. 
Thanks for doing this. I have no idea how long it's been since I've been able to have somebody sit for me. I think it's been since high school, probably. So sketching. This paper of graphite is quick and controlled. Long lines sweeping across the paper. I paused for a brief moment, glancing away in thought. I wanted to draw you since we met yesterday. <coughs> you have such a striking bone structure. It makes for a truly unique face. Nope, I can capture it. Close is up at you every couple seconds. Pencil still moving as he focuses his intense gaze on you. It's much easier than usual. Sometimes getting the basic forms down can feel like pushing through mud. This is like breathing, it's just flowing out. He, he continues scratching out your portrait, the sound of pencil the paper louder and bolder as he as the strokes gain confidence. I just can't believe I let this go for so long. That I never questioned her. That I so readily accepted the lines she gave me about my years being out uh, my years being numbered and my illness being so bizarre mystery some bizarre mystery genetic thing that no other doctors could solve. I know it's that's weird. I know it's hard to see when you're in the thick of it. But now oh but I was just so naive and who knows what lasting damage you managed to do to me. I realized it was a confidence that steepening lines in the paper. It's anger, frustration. Hey, focus on the moment. The future is the future. The past is the past. Just exist with me, here and now. I think I can. Oh, I'm still down here. I think Baby has stick to wait for wait her out. She could be up there right now, planning something. I don't know. The pencil snaps. Oh no, I'm sorry. I must have been acting strange. I feel strange. Do my nails look longer to you? Is so knock on the window? Um... Wayne? Wayne? Alright, we're still getting closer to that thing. It's time to go. Voice. I know that voice. He's actually been following you around. In other words, Wayne starts pounding on the supposedly shatterproof window. Enemies upstairs. Enemies outside. We're surrounded. If we get out of this house, I won't be safe. You won't be safe. Why did he call you that thing? He's some kind of monster and he wants me dead. Can't you feel it? The murderous intent is practically oozing out of him. I'm not weak anymore. I can fight back. I don't have to have in fear of the people who want to hurt me. You protect both of us, Iris. The window shatters. That's interesting. Oh my! This is not where I thought this was gonna go. Why does he have a tail? As we say, that is closed. The paint bubbles off the canvases. The ghoulish figures peeling themselves out of the two dimensional world, invading ours, falling up the walls. Grab my hand, I'll pull you out. Leave us alone. Okay. Surge of violence that in the surge of violence, the change that has been brewing inside is finally comes. As it manifests, the broken basement window is sealed off and Wayne along with it. Um What the Up the stairs. There we go. You've seen enough and you wanna leave. You run up the stairs. Oh, I blocked by a chair. Ah! And then blocked by something else, too. That's the chair out of the way and do your best to tear through the paintings covering the door. The forms and regenerate circles for you to claw your way through. For you to turn back to the basement. The remainder of Reese's paintings await their artist's command. It's okay, it's right there. I'll take care of this. And she won't be able to hurt anyone anymore. I'll be right back. This one's up the stairs, leaving you with his smears. Try to get 
try to leave. Bound up the basement stairs and rush for the front door. Oh, but it's still shut by his const constructs. <clears throat> Dad has his number. Where are you? I'm at the clinic. I think Dr. Kelly is in danger. This monster on the loose. We must let him to get you. It hangs up the phone. Make your way to the door to the basement. All intrigue now washed away. You know where it leads, and you know what secrets the stone that lurked in the forgotten basement of the clinic had to share with you. And the clinic holds a new horror. And then beyond a narrow hallway leading to the house proper, to the doctor's office. There's a monster. Heard to do something unthinkable. Open. Got the handle and turn. Duck. Duck. You know what she says, ducking out of the way. She shoots. The gun isn't very loud. It's only a pop and a projectile leaves the barrel, whizzing through the air. You turn to see a dart embedded in Reese's chest. Pulls the tranquilizer doubt art from between his ribs. Giving heavy breaths as the drug courses through his system. You're gonna try harder than that, you beat. How did you? If you could stop me, pathetic waste of flesh. Before Wayne takes another step down the stairs, paint flows between the cracks in the wood. Reese's panic, pulling the mob of furious smears to hold his enemies in place. <clears throat> the artist starts away, but the smears continue their work in his absence. Dr. Kelly makes her escape down the hallway, and Wayne is overcome. The wood inflates the top of the stairs by stiffening blobs of paint. Into a nearby room. Hide. Push out of main entry, taking cover in the first room you see. Three seconds pass. Things are quiet. Hey! Dr. Kelly's voice crackles out of an unseen speaker. You, Iris. Stuck in the safe room. I can't help you from here. But you can help both of us. What the hell is your son, ma'am? <laughs> I wish I knew. It was fun until he hit puberty. Everyone said raising a teen was going to be a bitch, but they don't know the half of it. Now listen to me. In the medical storage room, right? I need you to use the black taped key to enter the cabinet and bring me the elephant tranquilizers. Oh. It's a bottle labeled <coughs> Carfen Carfetanol. Bear tranquilizers clearly aren't going to cut it anymore. An intercon system, huh, dog? Good, you can hear this. Iris! I don't have to do anything she says. I'm not gonna hurt anybody, just her. If I don't, you and I both know she's gonna shoot me full of elephant tranquilizers. Did I hear that right? She should be back down in the basement. Maybe someplace even worse. Keep killing me every day with the rest of my miserable existence. I feel amazing right now, better than I ever felt in my life. I'm not dangerous. Just scared because she knows she's finally going to pay for taking pay for what she's taking from me. Wayne <laughs> Wayne <laughs> Wayne <laughs> I'm not going to let you kill someone, Reese. Why not? She wasn't afraid I might die. Does she know those triple A's aren't going to kill me? Does she care? Trust me, Reese. I've always been careful with your medicine. I want you to live. I love you. Tell yourself whatever lies you have to, Mom. If you want a good relationship, you had your chance. And you decided to convince me I was dying instead of letting me exist. Wayne. Yes, Wayne. I try to spin it like some kind of crime of passion. Now the consequences are staring you in the face. Enough. Hi, Wayne. Reese cries out in pain. What the hell did you do to my shoulder? I'll handle it. Try to get somewhere safe until then. Two stagger off down the hallway. 
push, grab the tranquilizers, and head to the safe room. The tranquilizers. Dresh just says the tranquilizers are easy to find. Mark with the small square black tape to match the key. Just an organized woman. Go to the safe room. Go, go, go. Make your way out of the medical storage room and back to the hallway where Dr. Kelly disappeared. As you approach Dr. Kelly Hughes, open the door, slowly breaking apart the mass of paint, sealing it shut. Hurry. I think I can keep it open for long. <clears throat> you slip past her into the safe room. She shuts the door quickly, but one of the little smears managed to slip past her. She stops on it. Painted viscera splatters across the cement floor. It was like Reese and your friend are still fighting. Probably have a few minutes before he gets here. Um. <laughs> <coughs> this is not how I thought this was gonna end. Honestly, I got, I gotta say this is not what I wanted. What's the game plan, both short and long term? Well, what a full of elephant twinkleizers, and then I lock him here. Then I somehow convince him to see things from my perspective. That we all live happily ever after. And if you can't, it doesn't really change much. Whether he's a willing captive or an unwilling captive, it doesn't matter. He's either under my constant supervision or he's dead. This is how it has to go. <coughs> what is this room? Old extra room, lead walls. After I realized the whole situation was a possibility, the door reinforced with special remote controlled locks. I'm glad it could finally come in handy. Let, let, let's talk, Reese. What the fuck? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I bet you have some questions. Go ahead, I got nothing left to hide. When did you find out? A little after he had puberty. He had all the unusual changes. Then a few extra. Thick and nails, sharp teeth, elvish ears. Figured he might have some kind of genetic disorder. Had him checked out for a few specialists. But there was nothing obviously wrong with him. We had an argument. He changed right in front of me. It was nothing like what he is just now, just a couple inches, and some facial abnormalities. I don't have to be noticeable. I was scared. You could see that. And he stopped. <clears throat> I thought it was a one off, maybe a hallucination. But the second time, it wasn't subtle. And it didn't go away so easy. That's when I knew for sure that there was something beyond my room expertise. How did he... Oh. How did he not know what he was? I've been medicating him since he was 12. We've only had three incidents like this before. Maybe four, depending on what counts. This is by far the... Oh, this is the worst one by far. <clears throat> I don't seem to understand at first that he looks different. And I make sure to stay on top of his dosages, so he rarely ever does. But I've been preparing for this inevitability. He's an adult now. There's only so much I could do to control him. Why don't you stop poisoning him? Dr. Kelly sighs. Can we stop calling it poison? Yes, it's poison. But that to me, giving him the poison is not be poisoning him. I was medicating his illness. Said when he was around 15. I had been giving him increasingly high doses of... Clonopin. But his body kept adapting, and his symptoms would come back. Especially if we ever fought. I couldn't keep ordering all those drugs. I was already suspicious, and I could risk losing my license. Especially if anyone ever found out what I was using them for. Someone approached me with a solution. I took it. I've been dealing with the emotional and mental consequences of that decision ever since. Who approached you and what did they say? Dr. Kelly gives you a long, hard look. I want to talk about that woman. But screw it, I might die tonight. Sure, I'll take you. I'll tell you. What? Hold on. Pause it. This one. It was. Bzz. And that's all I have to say about that. <clears throat> it 
What is he? I first thought he was some kind of werewolf. But if he is, he doesn't follow any kind of full moon rules or anything. Sulfur doesn't do shit to him. And you've seen what he looks like. It's just weird. I almost wish I could examine him. Well, he's fully transformed. I'd be fascinated to know what happens to him. Or what his body or when his body does it. But he seems pretty hell bent on ripping my throat out, so I guess I'll just have to remain a mystery. This is that similar. A strange little smile creeps onto Dr. Kelly's face. I wish I knew. I wish this kinda happened. I wasn't seeing anyone. I just woke up right in one day. I know how impossible that sounds. I'm a doctor for Christ's sakes. I kept having these weird dreams. Almost like sleep paralysis episodes. We might take sleep paralysis episodes. They were actually kinda sweet. But they were just dreams. Then all of a sudden my period stopped. I had morning sickness, and roughly nine months later. Reese. <clears throat> how do you know he's dangerous? Well, he wants to murder me, so that's clue number one. It's not like he's usually a violent kid. He's mostly just sad. But every now and then, we butt heads, and that's usually when this side of him comes out. Imagine if this happens every time he gets frustrated with someone. Imagine he gets road rage one day. Turns into a 12 foot tall monster with a million teeth, rips somebody apart in the middle of a major metropolitan area. Yeah, he's dangerous. I can fix him. I'd rather not have anybody's blood on my hands, so please don't try. Just let me handle him. <clears throat> While we're at it, any of the secrets you're keeping? You have it all. We know how relieved I am to finally say all this shit out loud. You and Dr. Kelly sit in silence and wait for her son to make his way to you. The sound of distant breaking glass it cuts through the silence of the clinic outside the safe room. Shit, this might be game time. Dr. Kelly opens the door. The two of you stare out into the hallway. Oh, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. Oh, no. Oh no, is this what you were afraid of? Head over the tranquilizers, it's our shot. I'm sorry, Reese. I love you, Reese! Hold on. Love you, Reese! Before Dr. Kelly could fire, a different shot rings out. Here's the body's thrown to the wall. Shotgun in hand, your cousin runs the corner. Here's her weapon on his writhing body. Tabitha, what are you doing here? Stop it! Let me sedate him. We can do with this non lethally. Are you insane? The thing is trying to kill you. No, we could do this. Sedate. You lean forward, placing your body between Tabitha and the whimpering Reese. His face already trying to stitch itself back together as he rises on the ground. Iris, what the hell are you, do you think you're doing? <clears throat> Wait, I'm sure we can all talk this out. With that thing, I don't think so. What if you shut up and help me drive him to the safe room now? Turn to see Dr. Kelly already pulling her son toward the open doorway. This swings her gun on her back, hopefully jumping in to help Dr. Kelly. Not long before he's, his regenerating body is sealed behind the door. Not exactly how I thought this would play out, but at least none of us are dead. If you've done any permanent damage to him, you're, gonna, you're going to be the one paying for the medical supplies, Miss Scarlet. You aren't seriously going to keep that thing alive, are you? It's clearly dangerous. What makes you think you can keep it locked up? It's- it's my son, Miss Scarlet. And despite appearances, he is still human. Pray for her- I prefer you refer to him as such. And I've managed to keep him safely locked away and harmless for years. 
Sure, it'll be more difficult now that he knows about his condition. But that room is lined with lead. He's not going anywhere. He's human. Are you sure about that? Are we talking about the same guy? Trust me. I've done genetic tests. He's human. Somehow. It is my job as his mother to protect him and to protect people from him. It's not a burden I take lightly. You don't have to worry about him getting out anytime soon. It's a monster. But if monsters deserve a chance at life, Tabitha. Give me that line. Who is about to eat both of you if I didn't show up? I don't care about your eth what your ethics are. I care about my cousin not being it digested by some twelve foot fruit with a million teeth. <clears throat> you don't have to defend him, Iris. I have a lot of cleaning to do, and I don't feel like entertaining a couple of bickering cousins while I do. I if both of you could just forget about what you saw and move on with your lives. My son is my business. When you guys leave the clinic, Dr. Kelly slamming the shotgun blasted door behind her. The two of you make your way out to the bottom of the hill, where Tabitha's car is parked, from the sleepy house to the Scarlet Hollow's residential street. You see her gun in the trunk and turns to face you. You're alone right now. Isilla's still missing. I tried calling her a couple times, but... I kept getting her stupid voicemail. Yeah. Shit, let me think, let me think. Long shot, but there's a place that might be worth checking out. Go on a hike. Bit of a truck. You and Tabitha stop by the edge of a two lane road near the town limits. They're sitting on a log, staring mournfully at the asphalt. It's Stella! <clears throat> you watch her from the underbrush. He's alive, thank god. She's more exasperated than relieved. I didn't know she'd be here. It's where her parents died. She ran off after we saw the ghost last night. It just made sense if you'd be here. Let's go talk to her. Oh no. We got baggage. I'll just make things worse. No, you're right. She's been practically begging for us to get closer than we are. So I stop letting my dead mother dictate who I'm allowed to talk to. Let's do it. <coughs> she joins Stella, first on the old log on either side of her. Hot oh, Tabby, that ghost really did a number on you. I'm so sorry. I had Iris worried all day, you know. I went all over town looking for you. And it looks like you've gotten into some trouble, too. Iris, you're all covered in blood. I think a lot of it's paint, actually. Paint? What? This is where your parents died, right? You stood in orientation. She survived because she was laying down. Oh, fuck. <coughs> That's not it at all. Yeah, she survived because she was laying down. Have you been sitting here all day? Yeah. Just waiting. Silence falls over the three of you. The wind rustling in the leaves and the sound of night insects carry on around you, muting all the all in the still night. Nothing happened though. That's probably for the best. Tabby. 
Did I do something wrong after the accident? Hmm? There's whole years of my life that feel like they just never happen. Like every time I try to remember them, it's blank. I have all these videos sitting on my channel that I don't even remember filming. It's scary. Did I do something to push you away? No. All you wanted to do was talk to me, but Paralane wouldn't let me near you. Oh. Tabitha sighs. It's not true. I was an adult when the accident happened. It doesn't matter what Paralan wanted. I need to stop hiding under my mother's coat every time I make a, de I make a bad decision. I push you away, Stella. And I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. Tabby. I missed you. I missed you too. <laughs> so fuck Paralan. <laughs> I don't think I need to say anything. You remain silent. Three of you stare out into a quiet night. <clears throat> I think the accident is probably why I got into ghost hunting. I just wanted to see him again. I wanted to know whether I even could. I never found anything, so I eventually gave up. And last night happened. We're right here to see if maybe. It would happen with them. Even meant seeing the crash again. I've seen them all messed up and dead. I just wanted to see them. It's been a whole day. I don't think they're coming. Do you want to say goodbye? So this is silence for a long moment. Her breath slow and even. Bye. I love you. Don't worry about me. I'm gonna be fine. She's silent again, as if waiting for a response. No response comes. But she smiles. A living glimmer returning, a lively glimmer returning into her sad eyes. I kind of felt better. I don't think I realized how much I kind of trapped myself in my own head. If you break me out of it, you too. Let's change up, stretching her back. We should probably get back, right? I haven't slept in a day. She doesn't even know. The events that just spread to the clinic to yourself, at least for now. If you make your way back through the woods, arriving at Stella's home. It's me. At least again, you two. For us to get back to the estate, Iris. Have you wait before you go. Stella wraps your cousin into a tight hug. Don't be a stranger, okay? Never again, I promise. You and Tabitha return, uh, quietly return to the estate, with you impossibly exhausted by today's events. I'm gonna crash. I'll see you tomorrow. Just to bed without another word. Go to bed. Exhausted beyond belief, you stumble into your room and collapse onto the bed. Close the door. I think you realize... This smells off about the room. It smells rotten. Get away from me. Please. I beg. Stop it. <laughs> I don't want you here. Don't look so frightened. I just gotta say goodnight. A few words of advice. Tabitha won't be around tomorrow. Too busy in the mines. Forbidden places won't be forbidden. Without her there to stop you. And you might <clears throat> be surprised by what you find. Till then, sleep well. Wait. Let me pause at the door. Yes. I'm not flirting with Wayne. I refuse to flirt with this man. <laughs> Did you know Reese was like that? I knew he was different. I exactly wasn't sure, but I knew. Why are you following me around? We're not Stella, or Kanika, or Sybil. We're not Tabitha. Because you're special. Thank you. But why? Why am I so special? You simply are. Do not feel the ties that bind us. They are unbreakable. Mm. 
Mm. Thanks for looking out for me tonight. Anytime you find yourself in danger, I'll be there for you. I will always be there for you. I'm not flirting with this man. Our family's death records today. Things aren't adding up. Good, you're starting to see the holes then. Look for more. Good night. Wayne leaves your room and closes the door behind him. The air smell of the mattress is starting to become almost welcoming. I sign that now the daily horrors of Scarlet Hollow are finally behind you. Until the sun inevitably rises once again. You close your eyes. Your exhausted body is succumbing to sleep almost immediately. As you drift off, you think of Reese, trapped in the tiny windowless room. All his greatest fears realized. His body no longer his own. But you stopped him from killing Dr. Kelly. The world, at least for now, is protected from him. And then you think of nothing. That's the end of episode four. You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. Freaking Wayne. So, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you later.